Hello again, everyone. I'm Dr. George Simon, and welcome to another edition of the New Character Matters. This is the program where we talk about what I consider to be the defining issue of our time, the character crisis that we face and that affects every aspect of our lives and has for so many years now, and uh, what we can all do to turn things around for ourselves, for our families, for our communities. And as you know, I've been talking about uh, material soon to be uh, released in a brand new book, Essentials for the Journey, Embracing and Living the Ten Commandments of Character. These are the proven life axioms important lessons that we all need to learn as we grow and develop in character to be persons of genuine integrity, uh, to build solid relationships, to build healthy community relationships. Uh, these are time-tested principles that we've kind of forgotten about, that we've let go by the wayside. And I've been talking about them. I first introduced them in my book, Character Disturbance, the Phenomenon of Our Age, uh, one of my best-selling books. I urge you uh, to read Character Disturbance if you haven't already done so and to recommend it uh, to folks because it really outlines the problems that we face uh, that affects so many areas of our lives, helps you really understand the phenomenon. And most especially, it helps you understand what you really need to do to procure the right kind of help. Whether you're uh, a person who's in a relationship with a troubled character or an immature uh, or disturbed or disordered character, or whether you're struggling yourself to become the person of integrity that we all have it within us to be. Uh, so the book uh, Character Disturbance was the first to uh, enumerate these character commandments, as I like to call them. Uh, but now uh, a brand new book really delving into them uh, and their importance and the substance of them, why they're so crucial. Uh, will be coming out very soon. I, I do believe that by Thanksgiving, the manuscript will be uh, at the ready uh, with the publishing outfit that I plan to use. And then by Christmas, we should have a nice gift uh, out there, hopefully for folks um, who are struggling in one way or another. At least I hope that's the case. Uh, but today I want to continue a discussion. We had a brief interruption with the live program last time, but we've been talking about the various commandments and we've been on character commandment number five, which has to do with basically uh, the beginnings of self-control. Commandments five, six, and seven all have to do with self-regulation, a healthy self-regulated life. Uh, and commandment five specifically has to do with learning to be uh, the master of, gaining mastery over your appetites and aversions. The things that you find uh, appealing, that you naturally gravitate toward, and the things uh, that you find aversive, that you uh, naturally want to avoid. You see, when it comes to good character, many times we have to realize that there are some things that seem very attractive uh, and that we're naturally inclined to gravitate toward that we probably shouldn't let ourselves go to, shouldn't let ourselves do. So, And there's also some things that we'd rather avoid because they're inherently unpleasant that we probably need to make ourselves do. That's the mark of really mature character. We don't just go with our likes and dislikes. We have to be more mindful than that. We have to assess, you know, even though this thing looks really appealing, do I really want to go there? And even though this thing really looks unappealing, maybe there's some benefit 
in me facing this difficult task. So it's important to have a mindful attitude towards our likes and our dislikes, our appetites and aversions, and to be in control of them as opposed to letting them control us. And that's what I want to talk about uh, quite a bit today, because we live in a very strange time. We have a whole bunch of aids to help us along with respect to managing our appetites and our aversions. And what I mean by that is, we have all these medications, for example, now, I'm just gonna use this as one example, that can help us self-regulate. They can help us uh, moderate our impulses. And unfortunately, there are, there are circumstances where this is absolutely essential. There are, there, are, there are illnesses, brain diseases, in which through no fault of a person's own, uh, the biochemistry goes so haywire that there just absolutely has to be medical intervention to help someone appropriately self-regulate. But the greater problem today is, is that we become all too dependent on a wide variety of external sources of control. We depend on so many things, the kickstart in the morning in our beverage, uh, the, the aid to help us sleep so we can regulate our sleep cycle the, the, the uh, medication to help us regulate our mood and not fly off the handle or stay on an even keel. We've become entirely de too dependent on those things. Now I am not, I repeat, I am not poo-pooing the necessity of those things uh, when appropriate, when indicated but we have become far too dependent on what we used to do for ourselves. We used to spend a lot more time teaching and reinforcing the skills of self-management that help us overcome any need for dependency on external structure, a pill, a coach, uh, so many folks uh, these days have so much trouble regulating their own appetites when it comes to food that they need a mentor <laughs> to basically structure their diet, to structure their habits, to teach them new habits. These were skills that in former days were acquired in childhood so that in adulthood, we could function without a, uh, a plethora, a, a whole band of nannies or other caretakers uh, to help us do for ourselves what we used to be able to do for ourselves. So the title or uh, subtitle of today's program is uh, that character is kind of like our psychological immune system. And what I mean by that is that as we grow and mature, if we're really uh, growing and maturing in a positive way that develops our character, we develop a sort of immunity to the temptations, uh, the stressors, all of those things that can uh, help us get imbalanced in our approach to life. Character gives us the strength to weather the storms of life, to meet the temptations of life, with a greater degree of mindfulness. You see the whole process of maturation, the entire process of maturation, whether it's emotional maturation, physical maturation, 
all the different aspects of our maturation process, they all have a common theme. All those aspects of maturation have to do with a overcoming inherent and at times necessary dependencies and becoming a fully independent, well-functioning individual capable of taking good care of ourselves. As infants, we can't take care of ourselves. As very young children, we can't take care of ourselves very well. Others have to do all these kinds of things for us. They even dress us at one point. They feed us at one point. That's human life. But if we're to grow in character, we have to learn how to take good care of ourselves. And these days, too many folks struggle with too many dependencies. I bristle when I hear the term codependent because what it really bespeaks most of the time, most of the time on that term, which by the way, is a very valid term that describes a real phenomenon, but it's been overused to describe all kinds of dependencies. And in adulthood, any kind of dependency is toxic, especially emotional dependency. And here's the big part about that that's so important. If we don't know how to take care of ourselves, if we don't know how to effectively manage ourselves, if we don't know how to self-regulate and truly love ourselves, if we don't know how to do that, we can't possibly relate well and love well another human being. I'm going to repeat that. If we don't know how to adequately and properly love ourselves, and if we haven't achieved the kind of self-mastery and developed the kind of character that leads us to be able to uh, lead a, a well-regulated, self-regulated life, we can't possibly have a wholesome, healthy relationship with another human being. We will bring our dependencies and our inadequacies to the situation, and it will always be detrimental to the relationship. So I can't stress it enough. Character is like a psychological immune system. It helps us weather the inevitable stresses of life. But it has to be developed. And times were when it was the preeminent concern of teachers, parents, neighbors, family, friends. Sure, there were other things important, but nothing was as important as the development of your character. We've kind of forgotten that. And we're paying a very, very dear price for it. The mere fact that relationships have the character that they do today, and that they fall apart so quickly, and they can be so toxic. This mere fact alone testifies to the importance of character. And of course, you know, I sound this drum beat all the time. Why? Because I think it's ultimately the solution to the hardships that we face and the headaches that we have in our lives. We can't depend forever on a pill to keep you from flying off the handle or to keep your mood stable or to calm your anxieties, learn to manage your fears, 
regulate your eating and sleeping habits. If you wish, you can remain dependent on all of these things. And as I mentioned before, sometimes, sometimes that's necessary. But it shouldn't be the goal. A healthy life is an appropriately self-regulated life, true independence. And with that comes freedom because we no longer need external sources of control because we know how to control ourselves. And it's not folks' fault, I don't think so much anymore, that the skills we really need to be able to do this haven't been taught very well and certainly haven't been reinforced. Without that reinforcement, without the constant rehearsal, without the constant habitual doing of the appropriate things that build character and without reinforcement for those things, they don't take root deep within us. Listen, that's what my work has been all about, helping us get back to that. Helping us learn to take good care of ourselves so that once we know how to be good lovers of ourselves, we can actually do a decent job, maybe, of loving somebody else. It's really that simple, but it's also that profound, and it's difficult. Eric Fromm wrote the book, The Art of Loving. There is an art to it. But there's also a tact to it. There's a method. Loving is not easy more natural. And I'm not talking about affection here. I'm not talking about desire. I'm talking about the genuine positive regard, the genuine wish, wishing well for a human being that opens up a whole new level of life. And becoming a master of our appetites and our aversions is a really big part of it. It's the very beginning of appropriate self-regulation. And so I'm going to be talking about it for a while on the program and giving some examples. You know, uh, in the news lately, there's been this very sad case, you know, this young couple uh, had some difficulties. And from what I can glean, I can't make a judgment about this, but from what I can glean, there were warning signs all over the place that very few folks noticed about the uh, huge uh, control issues that uh, this young man who likely has himself uh, perished, uh, that this young man had that resulted in the tragic loss of a life, probably, probably, can't say for sure, but most likely, uh, in a young woman. And I, I, I think sometimes, what if that inherent vulnerability hadn't been there for her. And I also think, what if, what if some more mature empathy, that's another subject. We'll have to talk about that sometime. Folks with empathy deficits, especially folks with empathy deficits have to have those, has, have to have that capacity really well nurtured and reinforced. Some folks lack it. And I don't, know, I don't know enough about this case to be able to make a judgment there. But what if there had been more mature empathy? Uh, and what if there had been a more evolved character 
and conscience, especially conscience in an individual. You see, uh, it's too easy to say that some folks just don't have the ability to control themselves. Actually, actually, in this one particular case, there's an excellent, excellent example in that video, uh, that video uh, of an encounter with law enforcement that demonstrates when folks who have a real problem deciding to control themselves in certain circumstances, especially when they want something or they feel entitled to something, especially if they have a form of narcissism in their character that makes them feel inherently deserving. You will see such folks exercise remarkable control when it serves them, when it serves their purpose. So when the authorities are kind of eyeballing your situation and want to know basically who you are, what kind of danger you might pose, you're capable of controlling yourself very well. But what happens to that control? What happens to that control when you want something really badly and don't feel you're getting it and you feel entitled to it? We'll get into that at some point later in the discussion of all these issues that the commandments relate to. It's important. It's important. These days, what we used to call conscience, what psychologists and other mental health professionals call superego, um, develops quite poorly in many cases, some cases not very much at all. And in some cases in such a warped fashion that the person can, can live a fairly self-regulated, seemingly benign life in many ways and still be capable of the most horrendous things. We'll talk about that in a later episode too. There's so much to talk about here. There's, that's one of the reasons why it's taking me so long with this uh, probably last book. But I'm going to continue to discuss these matters because they're so, so important. Character is the defining issue of our time. The defining issue of our time. And I've said this many times before in workshops across the country. If we don't get fairly brutally honest with ourselves, about ourselves, and our character shortcomings, and if we don't get similarly brutally honest with each other, about each other, and our character shortcomings, we're going to have a lot more hardship ahead. The world is getting more complicated, not less. The demands are greater. And those with the resources to function well, prosper. Those without the resources, are left behind and it fuels discord, breeds a whole lot of discontent. We're already just about at each other's throats in almost every aspect of our political life and community life. Even within faith disciplines, divisions reign supreme these days. Character is the defining issue of our time. And we used to give it more attention 
and hold it in higher esteem than anything else. And so we devoted our time, energy, and resources to it. Everybody did. Everybody participated in the enterprise. We've forgotten its importance. And now all manner of despicable character displays have become so normalized that we barely notice it. And in some cases, we don't even care so long as someone is serving our agenda. This continues. We have much more hardship to face and frankly, we deserve it. It's the price you pay for putting character on the back burner. So I'll have more to say about character and our psychological immune system, and especially about the importance of this command uh, that has to do with gaining mastery over our appetites and aversions on the next edition of the new Character Matters. So I hope you'll tune in. I hope you'll also visit my blog at uh, www.drgeorgesimon.com. That's D-R-G-E-O-R-G-E-S-I-M-O-N.com. Avail yourself of my books in sheep's clothing, uh, understanding and dealing with manipulative people, character disturbance, the phenomenon of our age, the Judas syndrome, and how did we end up here? The uh, uh, survival guide, the guide to surviving in this character disturbed world of ours, navigating through toxic relationships, recovering from them, uh, moving on, empowering yourself. So uh, with that, once again, uh, thanks for tuning in. I'm Dr. George Simon. I'll see you again next time on the new Character Matters. Take care.